this video, we're going to be making ourselves a photographer's logo that looks a little bit like this one here. Basically, this shape is meant to represent the aperture, which you will find inside a digital camera. If you go onto Google Images and actually look at photographer's logos, you will see that this aperture logo appears in all sorts of different photographer's logos. There's different variations of this design, but overall, they all look pretty similar, just different colors and slightly different shapes. Okay, so we're going to do this in Photoshop today. We'll get started by going up to File and New and making ourselves a new document. We'll make it, let's say, 800 by 800 pixels, 300 pixels per inch for the resolution, so it's ready to print at high quality. And we'll use the CMYK color mode. Once you've got those settings in, click on OK, and you'll get a nice big white canvas on your page. Now, the first thing we want to do is make ourselves a new layer in our Layers box over here. And we're going to go across to our Shapes tool, and we're going to select the Ellipse tool. Okay. What we want to draw is an ellipse in the middle of the page. So to find the middle of the page, we're going to have to use our rulers. If you can't see these rulers around the outside of your page, press Control or Command R, and that will bring your rulers up on the page. You simply click on the ruler and drag it onto your page. Now when you get close to the middle of the page, your ruler actually snaps into position. Okay, so I'm just going to drag these on and wait till they snap into position. There we go. So now I've got the center of my document. What I'm going to do is hover around that center point, and usually you hold uh, sorry, Shift and Alt at the same time and start drawing outwards. I'm just pressing Shift on my Mac at the moment, and that's already drawing out from the center. So I'll just roll with that. And you want to circle, say, about that big. Now once you've drawn it, hopefully you've got your properties box that appears over here. You just want to change the color to, I guess, whatever color you want your logo. I'm just going to go with a classic black color here and make sure I've got my stroke set to nothing. Okay, so you don't want a stroke for your color. We just want the black circle on the page. Next thing we're going to do is make another new layer. So over in our layers menu there, we'll just make a new layer. Back to our shapes and we're going to grab the polygon tool this time. With the polygon tool selected, we're going to hover around that center point again and hold shift and alt. I'm just going to hold shift and I'm just going to draw out a little polygon which looks like that. It should have six sides. Okay, if it doesn't have six sides, you can always adjust it in your properties at the top up there. Okay, once you have drawn your polygon or a hexagon in this case, I want you to grab your move tool from your toolbox and make sure that show transform controls is selected at the top. While you're holding shift, I want you to hover just off the edge of that shape and you'll see that your mouse cursor changes so you can rotate it. You just need to give it a nudge around one position so it's looking like that. Okay, press the tick at the top to accept those changes and you should have a little polygon in the middle of your screen looking something like this. Okay, I would like you to change the color of that as well. Actually, no, it doesn't really matter if we um, have a different color there. It's all right, we're going to delete that in a moment so don't stress about what color it is. Okay, what we're going to do next is go over to our Layers panel here, and we're going to hold down Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and we're going to click this little box here in the Polygon layer. By holding Command or Control and clicking that little box, it will select our polygon. You should be able to see the little marching ants going around our polygon there. Okay, Once we've done that, we're actually going to delete this shape from the ellipse or the circle layer here. So back on the ellipse layer now, I want you to right click on it first and just rasterize that layer. Okay, and with this layer still selected, you can press delete on your keyboard. Now it doesn't look like anything's happened, but if we just hide this polygon layer for a sec, you'll see you've got this white hole inside your circle. Okay, so it's done exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to cut out a polygon shaped hole in our circle. Alrighty, so what we're going to do now is just click on the polygon layer once and trash it. See the little trash can down the bottom? And we're going to deselect this polygon by pressing Control or Command D. Okay, and that'll just get rid of those little marching ants. So now we've got a circle with a hexagon cut out of the middle. What we're going to do next is add a new layer in. I'm going to go back to our Shapes tool here and grab our Rectangle tool. Again, doesn't really matter what color your rectangle is. I've got that light gray selected as my fill color, so that'll do. Again, you shouldn't have a stroke. And what I'm going to do, I might even press Control or Command Plus here to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to draw some skinny rectangles. The first one is just going to go 
off my circle like that. So you want to start at this little point here and drag it out till it goes just outside your circle. Once you've done that, I want you to right click and duplicate that layer and click OK. Using your move tool now, you should be able to pick up this grey rectangle and notice that we've got a second copy of it. Okay, holding shift, I want you to rotate it again. So just hover off the edge and give it a bit of a rotate. We want it to match up. Actually, I might go the other way first of all. I'm going to keep rotating till we match it up with this side of the polygon. I'm going to move it into position about there. Okay, then we're going to duplicate that layer. So let's press the tick at the top to accept those changes. Come down to our rectangle one copy and we're going to duplicate that layer. Press OK, drag it up, and we're going to give it another rotate. So hold Shift. This time, we're going to match it up with this other side. Um, whoops, a bit too far. There we go. And what we're going to do is snap it into position about here. OK, press the tick at the top when you're happy with your changes. If it's not quite right. You can see it's not quite on the edge of the polygon. I might just nudge it up and around a little bit with my arrow keys. That looks better. OK, back to our layers box. We're going to duplicate this again. So let's duplicate that layer. Click OK. Pick it up. And we're going to give it a rotate till it's horizontal this time. Once we've got a perfectly horizontal one, we're going to move it across and get it into position just up here. Press the tick at the top to accept those changes. Looks pretty good. Now we've just got two sides to go, so let's duplicate that layer one more time. Click OK and give this one a rotate. Okay, we're trying to match it up with this other side now, so let's try and get it into position over here. Looks pretty good. Except what I want to do, sorry, is just make this one go up. I'm doing it the wrong way. There we go, so that's looking better. And finally, I'll press the tick and duplicate this layer one last time. Click OK on the name, and this time, give it a rotate. So let's level with this final side and drag it around. Put it in the wrong spot again. We want it to go up. So something like that. Press the tick. Now when I zoom out, we should have our grey lines making that sort of shape. If yours aren't making that sort of shape, then you need to move those little skinny rectangles around until you get this kind of shape. Okay. Now what we're going to do is select each of these grey rectangles. Okay. And the way we're going to do it is pop over to our layers again. We're going to do what we did earlier. We're going to hold down Control, or if you're on a Mac, Command. And I want you to hold Shift as well. And that, what we're going to do is click on each of these little boxes on the rectangle layers. So there should be one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And once you've selected all those, you should see the marching ants appear around your page out here. Okay, so once we've got all those little uh, marching ants appearing there, I'm going to go down to the ellipse layer here and select that. Okay, so we're now back on this black circle or this black ellipse layer, and we've got these marching ants sitting over the top of it. If we press delete, that actually deletes what's behind those grey boxes. So what I'm going to do is just delete these rectangle layers now. So I've highlighted them all. I'm going to trash them and press Ctrl D to deselect everything. And you can see now our black circle has those white lines cut out of it. Okay, as you can see on our layers over here, we've only got that ellipse layer now, so we've got these nice uh, cuts coming out of it. Okay, so that's basically your logo done, but what we're going to do is add a little bit more to it to make it look fancy. So I'm going to go over and grab my ellipse tool again. I'm going to make a new layer for this. I'm going to put a border around our logo. So basically, Start on the center of your document here, hold Alt and Shift. If that doesn't work, just hold Shift and drag out a perfect circle that's slightly bigger than your current logo. Now when you drop it into position, it's probably got a fill color on it. So you're going to have to go to your Properties box here, and we're going to turn that fill off, and instead we're going to put a stroke on. I'm just going to choose a black stroke, and I've got it set to one point, and that's all well and good. Okay, we can close our Properties box. That's a pretty good looking logo. Okay, I'm just going to move these rulers off the page now, so I'm just going to pick them up and drag them off. Okay, that logo is looking pretty decent. 
But what I might do to it is put a splash of color in there using some gradients. So I'm going to go across to my layers panel here and right click on the ellipse one layer, which is my main circle here with all the black triangle shapes. Once I've right clicked on that layer, I'm going to go up to blending options. Okay, in the blending options section here, make sure you've got preview checked. And I want you to put a gradient overlay onto your um, design. Now, if you click this colored box here, I actually chose the first option here for my colors. It's, I think it's a nice uh, mix of black and gray there. You can go through and choose all these different crazy colors if that's what you like the looks of. It's up to you, but I'm just going to stick with that nice, simple um, black and gray effect. And I'm going to click on OK. Make sure all your settings there are the same as mine. Or well, you can adjust them if you like, but I think that looks good. Now the stroke, I want to do the exact same gradient on the stroke. So I'm going to right click on this ellipse 2 layer, which is my stroke or border. Go up to blending options and do a gradient overlay again. The same sh settings should appear. So click OK. And you've got a decent looking logo there now. The last thing I want to do is show you one other effect. If you don't like this and you want to put a bit of a twirl effect in the center of your aperture here, click on the ellipse layer just to select it and go up to your filter menu at the top. I know you can't see that because um, my screen's getting cut off at the moment, but in your filter menu at the top, you can go down to the distort option and select filter. Okay, and this is the kind of effect we're getting. You can play around with the angle here to get more of an effect. Okay, it's up to you. Um, I'm gonna try about 100, I think, and we'll see how that looks when I click OK. Probably a little bit too far actually, so I might undo that and just go up and do that filter one more time. So I'm going to go back to the distort, choose filter, and we've got 12, 50%, well, sorry, 50 degree angle would probably look good. Yeah, that's looking much better. Okay, so that's one way you can create a cool aperture logo in Adobe Photoshop. When you are done, all you need to do is go to File and Save As. Now, there's a few different ways you can save this um, file. I'll just make this screen a bit smaller so you can see it. If I just stick it on my desktop, give it a name up the top here like Photographer Logo. Make sure you save it in a folder uh, that's suitable for this subject. Now there's a few ways you can save it. Um, I'm not really bothered. I guess for the task that we're doing today, we'll just leave it as a JPEG. Leaves it in a fairly high quality format and it's a very small file size, so let's just stick with JPEG and click on Save. It's going to ask you for some settings. You might as well ramp it up and have a large file there. It's only 1.3 megabytes, so not a very big size. You can click OK. Now, if you wanted to, you can grab your text tool and add some text um, around the document as well. It's up to you if you do that. I think it would look alright if you do throw a little bit of text in there, but it's up to you. I've shown you how to design the main part of the logo. It's your job to finish it off. Okay, that's all I'm going to show you in this video.